Welcome back, my friends. Thank you so much for tuning in. This is Silver Slayer. So now let's talk about the most interesting short selling story in history, the tale of the Hunt brothers and Silver. These were three brothers, billionaires that owned up to 77% of the global silver supply. They single handedly pushed the price of silver up to the highest price it's ever been still till this day, $50 in 1980. 2011, it was close, around $49, but these three brothers single-handedly cornered the silver market. And I want to talk about this because what they did was they bought all this silver on the COMEX and then turned the contracts into physical delivery. Well, I made a video the other day, actually yesterday, maybe two days ago, depending on when this video comes out, talking about the COMEX deliverable silver is far less than imagined as 50% of eligibles not available. And if this COMEX facade falls through, which the COMEX, LBMA, and even LME vaults are near empty, then what the Hunt brothers did would be very similar. And if that, if what they did, which by the way, uh, we're going to go deep into this because I actually made a video about this um, last year, like a three-part docu-series, but what they did was put the COMEX in a situation that was going to expose it. It would have fallen because... All the silver they turned into physical delivery was not available to deliver. There wasn't that much. So the government banned silver. Yes, you heard me correctly. They banned silver. It was called Silver Rule 7. You could not buy silver on the COMEX. They banned it. You had to sell it, and you had to sell it back to the Federal Reserve. And that led silver from $50 back down to like $9 or whatever it was previously. And it actually led to Silver Thursday, which was when the price of silver fell more than 50% on a Thursday. Regardless, though, I want to look at this because if the Hunt brothers did this and the COMEX almost got exposed, the government wasn't going to let it happen, so they banned silver before it got exposed, and we know the COMEX is close to collapsing nowadays, then could they do that again? Could they push this Silver Rule 7 again? They made that law on the spot. They made that law on the spot. They were not going to let the COMEX collapse. I mean, these brothers owned so much. I mean, some analysts say up to 77% of the global as well it, it, of the global silver supply. Now, even back then we still needed silver for a lot of technology and everything. So, do you think that the government or, or the world couldn't even move on without you know, th think about this. If three people owned 77% of the of all the silver in the world, three people <laughs> That leaves no silver left for automobiles, for jewelry, for bars and coins and whatever else silver's needed for. Think about that. They had to ban it. And it's honestly probably a good thing. It's probably a good thing. Now, this story gets very sinister. And by the way, they got into silver because gold was banned at the time. Think about that. Think about that. In 1980, gold was banned. That's why they went into silver. See, the reason these brothers, the reason these brothers got deemed sinister and evil was because the government didn't want the truth of why they were buying silver to get exposed. Just like the government probably doesn't want us to to get, you know, get pushed out there in front of the spotlight because the government doesn't want people to know that we're investing into silver because the dollar's worthless and collapsing and to take the control and the power away from them and put it into our own hands so they can't control us. They don't want the world to know that, the public. And when this story was breaking, it was so popular that what else was the government going to do besides make these guys seem like some shady, sinister right, uh, uh, people so nobody would trust them? Right? Instead of making them look like heroes and these smart guys that are putting their money into silver because the dollar is worthless, they deemed them as evil criminals, which they did honestly do a couple shady things. And if they wouldn't have done those things, they probably would have got away with this. But regardless, you could see why the government would paint them as, as evil and these criminals so people wouldn't follow suit and wouldn't listen to them. Regardless, though, this is a very controversial story. There's a lot of um, hearsay. There's a lot of speculation. I dug deep. This isn't the. This is only one of the videos I made talking about this because there's the mainstream public 
information about this, but if you go down this rabbit hole, it gets a lot deeper. And remember folks, the main reason I wanted to make this video is because if that happened before, if the COMEX was about to collapse and uh, the government did this before, banned silver, then why wouldn't they do it again today? Especially since the stakes are so much higher, so much higher. You know, since we need silver for the Green New Era. Back then, they weren't going green yet. They just needed it for a multitude. I mean, silver's always been needed for five, 6,000 years. But today, right, since we're much more advanced digitally and technologically, plus the silver shortage is much more scarce than you have Wall Street. Silver, which is already basically cornering the market in a similar fashion, things could definitely get interesting. So... Let's look at this short selling story, the most interesting one, the tale of the Hunt Brothers and Silver. In the 1980s, a special duo made decisions that will forever shape the future of one of the most important financial markets. The duo were bold, and that boldness led to an ultimately disastrous bet. And right, and like I said, the Hunt Brothers could have got away with this, but... But they did start borrowing and doing things they didn't even need to do, right? These guys are billionaires. Regardless, though, short selling is a financial strategy in which investors bet against a particular asset, hoping to profit from a decline in its price. And the thing is, is that's like, see, they knew silver and precious metals in general. They knew the benefits. They knew the dollar was worthless. So that's like me. That's like one of us getting into the public eye and the government says, you know, you guys are just trying to profit off silver. It's like, no, we under, there, there's other reasons beyond just buying low and trying to push the price up and then cash out when it's $100. No, there's a lot of other reasons, much more important than that. Silver is wealth. That's a hard angle they tried to play is these guys are just trying to do something very illegal and just, you know, it's all money driven, finance, fiat. So while this can be a risky and controversial tactic, it is widely used as a profitable trading strategy. One of the most interesting examples of short selling in history occurred in the 1980s when two brothers named Nelson Bunker Hunt and William Herbert Hunt made a bold and ultimately disastrous bet regarding the price of silver. There was actually three brothers, by the way. The Hunt brothers, who were members of the wealthiest families in America, had been interested in silver for years. In the early 1980s, they believed that the price of silver was artificially low, and they decided to use their vast wealth, borrowed money to try and drive up the price. See, they didn't just, they, they didn't need to borrow money. They started putting themselves in positions with other banks, and it just made themselves, uh, they, they, they shot themselves in the foot. To try to drive up the price, they began buying large qua uh, quantities of silver, and they also entered into contracts to buy even more in the future. So as the Hunt brothers continued to buy silver, the price began to rise. Using leverage or borrowed money, the wealthy brothers buying power started to outstrip investors who had anticipated the price of silver to decline. So there's so, so much context in between these lines. And you can see Yahoo Finance is taking the angle of these guys were kind of the criminals. It's not that way if you look into the deeper picture of this. That's why I highly recommend you check out my, my like two or three video or two or three video part docu series I did um, because even if you, you could see in this you know it's um, the real Hunt Brothers story there's the real story and then there's you know the public eye I even covered some videos in there um, but it goes deep it goes deep it goes deep um, regardless though uh, regardless, though, let's go back to this. So, when those same investors were forced to cover or unwind their trades that were geared towards the decline in silver, this added to the buying pressure in silver a short squeeze. This added pressure meant that the Hunt Brothers bet was starting to pay off and the price of silver continued to climb. But, and, and as it's climbing up to $50, the government pushes a new law in place. Silver Rule 7, banned silver on the COMEX. And remember, gold was already banned at the, price, uh, at the time. As the price of silver surged by nearly 10 times, the, the exchanges that handled this trading started to take notice. In 1980, rules were changed regarding leverage bets in commodity markets. There we go. Rules were changing. 
Silver Rule 7. This decision meant the Hunt brothers had to immediately reduce their level of holdings, and it was down to, like, nothing. And they honestly, honestly, the only people that could keep silver, kind of like gold in 19th art, were, um, were, were like, coin collectors, like, like certain coins. The ensuing panic led to a quick decline in the price of silver. Yeah, because you couldn't buy it. You had, to hold, you, you had to sell it. The rush exits led to the collapse in both silver and the Hunt brothers' positions. Despite their best efforts, the Hunt brothers were unable to stop the price of silver from collapsing. In the end, they were forced to sell their silver at a huge loss, and they were unable to pay the debts they had incurred as a result of their failed bet. At one point, it was estimated the Hunt brothers had amassed billions of dollars in positions and approximately one-third of the world's supply of silver. And yeah, that number is everywhere. I've heard up to 77%. I've heard 50%. I've heard a third. Um, regardless, they owned a lot of silver, much more than the government was going to allow. So they said, no, we're not going to let this happen. The other thing to remember is a lot of this was digital contracts turning into physical delivery. Today, the Hunt Brothers story is a reminder of the risks and uncertainties of short selling and the dangers of trying to manipulate the market. While short selling can be a profitable strategy, they weren't trying to short sell. What they were doing was buying boatloads of it, but they weren't short selling it. They were t even turning in the contracts, the physical delivery, proving they weren't selling it. They were holding it, and they were just trying to turn it into physical, which there wasn't enough physical, which that alone would have exposed the, the, the COMEX. See, there's so many, there, there's so much um, speculation to this story, especially since it's been a while now in 1980. You know, it's, it's been a while. Uh, it's been pretty long ago, but there still is a lot of um, a, a lot of good information out there that you can d dive into if you wanted to go deep enough. Um, but I feel like most people just look at the surface level stuff and don't really take the time to look at the other articles that aren't just on the front page of the news or Yahoo Finance, and it can get a little it can get a little messy. Regardless, though. Regardless, that's not why we're, we're looking at this video. We're not trying to see, oh, what was the root cause? Or We're just trying to see, since that happened before, and there's something similar happening today, could the same outcome or something similar happen? Yes, I could definitely see the government banning silver. Now, it wouldn't be as um, dramatic. See, when I say, like, uh, silver confiscation, which could also be a thing, I mean... The government's confiscated gold time and time again. Executive Order 6102 from FDR stating that everyone must turn in their gold. It's owned by the Federal Reserve now. Uh, and if you don't, you're going to pay a $10,000 fine or 10 years in prison or both. Right? That was in 1930. If they did that before, why wouldn't they do it again? It's happened time and time and time and time again throughout history with gold. And it's usually in times of war. Or economic turmoil. Hmm. But both of those things are similar now. But even just strip gold from that. What about silver? We know there's a massive silver shortage. We know that mining production can't ramp up to try to fix this. Recycling can't fix this. You know, what are they going to do? Ask us to turn ours in or confiscate it? Or maybe, and if they confiscate it, usually they do buy it at a set price. They'll buy it from you. Um, and I think the angle they would play is help, help save the world, right? We need, we need silver for EVs and solar panels, so turn in your silver or whatever the case is. Um, I could see that working more than just saying give us your silver or go to prison. But, you know, a lot of this is speculative. I'm not saying that's going to happen. I'm just saying that it, is, it has happened before, not only from FDR, the executive order uh, 6102, but it's also happened with the Hunt Brothers, which is a story much deeper and much more sinister than the forefront. So regardless, let me know what you think about this. I'm sure a lot of people are going to disagree. A lot of people are probably going to say, no, this and no, that. And, you know, this story is so controversial because there's so much hearsay that nobody really knows their, their true motives. And so much happened throughout those, like, five-month period when, when you're talking about Silver Rule 7 and then um, Silver Thursday, even the beforehand start of that, um, when they started buying, or then when you had mainstream media catch on, then you had to have them kind of deepened into the, into the spotlight, then with the court situation, and then 
I mean, this situation was massive. And you could see why the government, as everyone caught on, why the government wouldn't want them to know why these brothers truly were buying silver because they're trying to put their money in something that holds its value. That would expose the, the truth, and the government doesn't want the truth to get exposed. So, of course, stories like this are going to come out saying that, you know, just short selling is risky and don't do that. Kind of like people saying Wall Street Silver, they're just a bunch of short sellers that don't really care when these are real silver stackers that aren't planning on selling. And these guys, they definitely, uh, they, they understand the true value of the dollar. So anyways, yeah, I'm going to wrap this video up here. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you thought this video was educational, informational, at least entertaining, make sure to hit the like button. Let me know what you think about this. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Let me know. I'll also um, I'll, I'll, I'll link this video in the description. Um, if you did want to purchase some of that shiny stuff, bottom left-hand corner link is to the best precious metals dealer in the country. That's Miles Franklin. Send an email to info at milesfranklin.com. Let him let him know Silver Slayer sent you. That help that help me out. Also helps you out. Andy Checkman's the CEO. He's a good friend of mine. We do a weekly show. Um, he's he's one of the top dogs. He can find silver where a lot of people can't. They have great prices. You're in good hands there. Building a business relationship could be extremely beneficial if you start buying through him and he gets to know you and you guys can chat about. That can be a lot a lot. Um, just like business uh, building relationships in person. Beyond just buying from some random person that doesn't know or care about you or you don't know who, or care about who is filling that order behind the screen. See what I'm saying? So anyways, yeah. Thanks for tuning in. This was Silver Slayer. I'll see you guys soon. Peace.